Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about creating content in Middleman. So basically, we're just going to go over how can you create content for your website. And with Middleman, it's very simple. You know, a lot of these static site generators kind of try to push you into creating content one way or another. Middleman's not like that. Basically, with Middleman, you just create content on your page and then it shows up on the website. It's really easy. The way that we make content is by just creating HTML or markdown files inside of this source folder. So this source folder is sort of like the root directory of your website. And you'll see down here just by default, we have this index.html.erb file. And this is like the home page for our entire website. And I want to point out this file extension right here, .erb. And .erb stands for Embedded Ruby. Now, Middleman is a program that is based on Ruby. And so it's written in Ruby and we're using Ruby when we're using Middleman. And when you use this .erb extension, what it allows you to do is embed Ruby code inside of your HTML or your markdown files. And so we can actually put like snippets of Ruby code inside of a file if it has this .erb extension. So in Middleman, when you create files, you can either create um, the file with a .erb extension, or you can create it without it. But in order to use like Ruby logic and Ruby code inside the file, you need that .erb. So this index.html file is just the file that you see running over here. And if I open this up, you'll see that um, this is the text that's inside of the website. Before we actually create content, I want to show you guys how to install something called Live Reload on Middleman. And what Live Reload will allow us to do is it'll basically push any of the changes that we make inside of our text files or HTML files onto the website. So you won't have to re uh, refresh the web browser every time you want to see a change. And that's going to be really useful. So what we want to do is come over here into this config.rb file. And inside this config.rb file, I want to make a new line and I'm just going to put activate and then space a colon. And then we're just going to say live reload, just like that. And then once we have that written inside of our config.rb file, I want to go over here to this gem file. And inside of this file, we're going to include that uh, middleman live reload dependency. So basically, we're telling middleman like, hey, we want to use this uh, middleman live reload plugin. So I'm just going to type out gem. And then inside of a single parentheses, we'll just type middleman hyphen uh, live reload, just like that. And then one more thing we need to do is open up a terminal window and you want to make sure that this terminal window is open to the same directory that we're currently inside of. And we're just going to type out bundle install. And what this will do is it'll basically rebuild the entire middleman package. So we'll be able to um, install that live reload. So this is going to do a bunch of stuff and you'll see that this using middleman live reload is now included. So all we have to do now is restart our middleman server and I just have it running right here. So I'm just going to restart it. And now whenever we make changes to our website, so for example, if I head over to this index.html file, and this is just the file over here, if I make a change, so I make a change and then I save it, that change should automatically get pushed. And hold on one sec. Yeah, so you see it's automatically getting pushed over to the website whenever I add new text. And this is just useful so you don't have to be um, constantly refreshing the browser. It'll just make your development cycle a lot easier. So now that we have um, looked at using Live Reload, let's talk about creating files. So we already have this index.html file. If I want to make a new uh, HTML file, what I can do is come over here, new file, and then We'll just call this a.html. And I'm going to give this that .erb extension. It's usually, you know, it's always better to just give it the ERB extension. That way, if you want to put some Ruby code in there, uh, you can do that. So we'll make this new file and we'll just say, like, this is the a file. And the way that I can see this in my website is by heading over to um, just forward slash a.html. And you'll see that the uh, text that we put inside that file shows up. You can also create 
uh, folders in here. So if I made a new folder inside this source folder, just call it directory one. And inside of directory one, I could place a new file. We'll just call it b.html. And now over in our browser window to access that file, we can just go forward slash dir1 forward slash b.html. And it gives us the b file just like that. So that's sort of the basics of how you can create different content, different HTML content. And if you're familiar with, you know, just a normal web server and how you would organize um, HTML files on a normal website, it's basically the same thing. Another thing we can do is instead of creating HTML files, you can also create markdown files. And before I do that though, I just want to point out right here, um, you'll notice that this B file isn't using that yellow background. So if I go back to that A file, it has this yellow background. And that's because I didn't give this that .erb extension. So if I come over here and I rename this with .erb, now when I refresh the page, this B file is using that um, overall like layout. We call it a layout or a template. And that's just kind of like, you need this .erb extension in order for it to use the layout. And so if you don't add that ERB extension, it won't use the layout, but if you do, it will. And that's kind of another way that you can control how content is created on your website. So like I said, in addition to HTML, we can also create Markdown. I'll just come into this source folder and to create a Markdown file, you just wanna type the name of the file. So I'm just gonna say C and then you need .html and then .markdown. And again, if we wanna use that template, we can say .erb, okay? And so now inside this uh, Markdown file, we can just say like this is um, Markdown and I can head over to this C file on my website and that'll load up that Markdown file. So even though we are technically writing Markdown in here, and so like if you're familiar with Markdown, like you could write your entire website just in here, um, it's gonna be displayed as an HTML file and that's because we put this .html extension on it. So that's kind of the basics of creating files. So like I said, you can create HTML files or Markdown files and you can store them in different subdirectories. I mean, basically middleman's not trying to like force you into using any specific folder structures or really trying to force you into doing anything. So you can really get creative with the way that you're creating these files and, and doing all this stuff. So yeah, that's the basics of just creating content in your middleman site. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.